Hello, everyone. My name is Doug Tedder, and it's a pleasure for uh, me personally and, and uh, for the, to be on this panel discussion to talk about our digital dialogue topic of the day, how enterprise service management drives digital success. Like I said, I'm joined by a, just an expert panel. I'm very excited uh, to get the conversation started. Uh, so why am I guest hosting the digital dialogue? Uh, I am a, a alumnus uh, fellow of the Institute for Digital Tech, uh, Digital Transformation. So uh, thank you to John and the team for inviting me to uh, join in and lead this uh, conversation for you today. And I'm joined by some uh, great panelists, as I alluded to earlier. Let's get them introduced if we should, could. And I'm gonna start with uh, Nora Osman. Uh, Nora is the CEO of Norvana, who, where she leads the efforts to enhance customer experience and service management for businesses. With a deep expertise in optimizing service delivery, she empowers organizations to achieve operational excellence and customer satisfaction. Nora's strategic insights and leadership has made her a trusted advisor in the field. Uh, and she is dedicated to fostering a culture of continuous improvement and innovation in service management. Hello, Nora. Hi. Good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce, uh, get my, uh, uh, John Worthington. Uh, John has more than 40 years in IT, more than half of that uh, in service management. He began his career in sales and business development with large enterprises such as AT&T, Unisys, and VMware. He's also had experience with smaller firms and startups like EG Innovations and Third Sky, and was an ITIL instructor for ITSM Academy and Global Knowledge. Uh, he's had many certifications throughout the years, including ITIL Expert, CISA, PMP, TIP Elite Assessor, Assessor uh, DevOps, XLA Master, and more. Today, he's focused on the United Service Management Method and is the first certified USM professional in the United States, focused on coaching people uh, in the US on the USM method. Welcome, John. Well, uh, thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. My pleasure as well. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, I'd like to introduce Rick Mims. Uh, Rick is a seasoned professional with a wealth of experience in the field of IT service. Let's try that again. IT customer service and support. With a successful career spanning over three decades, Rick has consistently demonstrated a deep commitment to excellence and innovation in his work. Throughout his career, Rick has held various leadership positions in prominent companies such as BP Oil and Gas, where he has overseen the development and implementation of cutting-edge customer service strategies. His keen insights and strategic vision have helped drive business growth and enhance customer satisfaction. Rick's dedication to the field of IT customer IT service and support was recently recognized with the prestigious 2022 HDI Lifetime Achievement Award, I happen to be in the audience when Rick was awarded that one. Uh, and this award serves as a testament as to Rick's outstanding contribution to the industry and his unwavering commitment to excellence. Rick is known for his passion to, for continuous learning and professional development. He's a firm believer in staying ahead of industry trends and embracing new technologies to deliver exceptional service to customer customers. Uh, he currently serves as the ServiceNow Solutions Director for SDI Presence based in Chicago, Illinois. Welcome, Rick. Good to see you. Hey, thank you for having me today, Doug. Really appreciate yeah. it. I, I am so excited to be joined by you three folks. Uh, I, I follow you all on LinkedIn, have had many conversations with uh, Rick and, and John. Nora, I'm looking forward to getting to know you better after uh, today's uh, call. But, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion. Let's just jump right in. There's a lot of discussion about digital transformation, digitization, lots of terms being flown around, even when it comes to enterprise service management. So oftentimes these terms are just looked at as being buzzwords. And so I'd like to hear your opinion. How would you define these terms? And uh, Nora, let's start with you. All right, so people often talk about digital transformation and you're right, it probably means different things to different people. In my personal opinion, I think it's really just simple. Looking to digitize services and products in a way to make them better, faster, and cheaper. It's really that simple. Modernizing and finding ways to really improve over time using these technologies. 
Well, when I think about enterprise service management, it is really taking that service management initiative and stepping it up to where it's beyond just technology. So when you think about servicing your internal or external customers, it's integrating different functions and making it so cohesive and easy for them to acquire service and acquire products through that steady, simple, unanimous way of delivering service. Example, if you're in an internal capacity and you have an enterprise service management portfolio, you have a single portal and that portal is accessible for technology services, whether it's a hard drive, uh, software, rights that you need help with, or for instance, you need HR matters resolved as an employee, or you might need technology from a telecom perspective or facilities requests. Maybe it's procuring a conference room. It's one-stop shopping. Yeah. And, and yeah, thank you, Nora. That that's, you know, and that's a very common definition that, that I run into as well. It's just kind of creating that one-stop place yeah. for uh, end users to interact with services being provided by their organizations. John, what do you think? How would you define enterprise service management and digital transformation? Well, I would I would echo what Nora said. Uh, I I, uh, I I agree with everything she said. I, I think, you know, if, if we break break ESM down, uh, first of all, it's about the entire enterprise. It's not limited to IT. So there's oh. HR. There's finance. Everyone today is a service provider. So when we talk about enterprise service management. It's everybody's business. It's not just IT's business. Um, the second thing, it's about services. Uh, and this is a difficult one because each uh, practice framework, uh, each part of the enterprise will tend to uh, define services in a way that they're comfortable with, uh, which makes it very difficult to have a consistent specification of exactly what a service is. Uh, and so that's uh, that's a challenge. And then the third thing is it's about management. So you need to coordinate and organize resources to meet customer objectives and business objectives and so forth. So enterprise service management is about all of those things. And the uh, digital experience is the technology is so pervasive today. It's easy to see why customers focus on IT service management because technology is virtually everywhere. Uh, we need to be careful though, because um, there are very important parts of services that have nothing to do with technology. And so enterprise service management needs to take all of that into account. Yeah, services are kind of the key foundational element of a enterprise service management approach. Uh, so, so Rick, what, what, are, what are your thoughts? How would you define these terms? You know, it's interesting um, as I with my clients day to day, um, you know, in the various missions, I t tend to take a look at ESM is from a strategic, tactical and operational view um, as far as what CIOs and IT directors are trying to accomplish in this day and age. Um, quite often, I see many of the wrong tools being leveraged to try to accomplish digital transformation and or ESM. Um, a lot, and to me, the mission is really about what, what problem are we trying to solve today? Um, if we're just doing help desk ticketing, tracking, routing of tickets, that sort of thing, yeah, your, your brain is not really wrapped around um, leveraging enterprise service management. You're stuck on IT service management. On the other side of the fence as well, I'm starting to see as a trend where uh, many CIOs are actually driving and trying to leverage toward ESM because having that single pane of glass, so to speak, in order to uh, drive decision making, in all areas of the business. There's more visibility into uh, key performance indicators and trends and usage and these types of things. So um, from my perspective, this is what uh, my team and I spend a lot of time day to day actually implementing um, for our customers. Um, is that 
drive, if you will, um, for great decision making so that then we can accomplish um, service improvements for customers, service improvements for employees, um, gained efficiencies for employees, simpler ways of doing things. All of that comes into play um, if you're doing it right. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, Rick. I think enterprise service management, you know, it, you know, does a couple of things. One, it brings a lot of transparency into what the organization is doing and and uh, the ebb and flow of information, products, services, etc. And and it gives us a way to measure it at an enterprise level, which always seems to be uh, a lot of the challenge with uh, companies that I work with as well. So, mm -hmm. so uh, for those of you listening in, I encourage you to ask your questions. I think there's a link at the bottom of the uh, screen here. And, and so we'll look for that uh, or add your questions into chat and uh, we'll be happy to work those in as we can. So with that background, then let's just jump right into our topic how does enterprise service management or how can enterprise service management drive digital success? So, John, let's start with you. Well, I think efforts at improving digital experience are going to drive ESM and vice, vice versa. So, uh, but all of the improvements in an enterprise need to be managed. Uh, managed. And so that's why I'm uh, focusing on helping people establish a management system uh, that is uh, generic enough to accommodate all business units, uh, not just IT. Uh, and so if finance wants to use COVID best practice and IT wants to use idle or something else, um, we can have a consistent unified structure uh, to manage all services in the enterprise from. And that, that frankly, I think is, uh, is, uh, missing today because as we apply more and more practice guidance, uh, we inadvertently create more complexity and more uh, fragmentation. And that goes right to the integration challenge that uh, Nora uh, mentioned. Uh, and so establishing and relooking at your management system and uh, creating some structure around that is, uh, I think, very important. Yeah, you, you mentioned the experience and, and that really, in, in my view, it is starting to become the key one of the key differentiators for organizations that are out in the digital economy, digital world. How is that experience? And and you talked about the necessity for a system. So I'm I'm sure that's something we'll explore a little bit later in our conversation. Uh, Rick, what are your thoughts? How can enterprise service management drive digital success? Well, I think it quite honestly starts with the strategic aspect. Um, you know, in speaking again with the CIOs and IT, direct, IT directors, uh, managers of IT. Um, what is your strategy? What are you hoping to accomplish? Um, you know, because I need you to take a look at this as, it, um, as we implement ESM. Um, one of the things I, I often recommend is, let's take a look at not only, you know, the, the costs, and all of those things, you know, money is always the key thing, budget, et cetera. That's always the driving force behind a lot of these initiatives. Um, but I also want you to think about the policies uh, behind what you're about to do. I need you to think about your compliance uh, standards that affect your products out to your customers. Um, and then one of the big periods at the end of the sentence for a lot of these initiatives that um, I think that we quite often forget is simply governance and being able to really talk about from a governance perspective, how do we keep, for example, and we'll, as you said, we'll get into the uh, technology a little bit later on, but when does the CMDB become the definitive source of information in the environment? Um, you know, where do you go to know what you know? Is your knowledge management capability going to be a foundational driving force for everything that you're doing going forward? Um, as well as, oh, we're thinking about Gen AI. Well, okay, are you thinking about retrieval AI? Or are you thinking about Gen AI? What are you thinking about here? And none of that's gonna work without a distinct program of knowledge management and that, that type of initiative. So um, I think in driving this to success, to answer your question, I think quite often we have to go back to fundamentals. We have to go back and take a look at um, all of our uh, policies, our procedures, 
uh, the work instructions that make up all of those things, governance standards, how do we keep all of the information in our environment a definitive source of information that can be used to drive business? Yeah, yeah, I, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, it starts with a strategic view. And, and I think that's, you know, you know, especially for when you think about digital transformation, when you think about, uh, you know, enterprise service management, take, taking good service management practices across the organization, there has to be a strategy to kind of leverage that. Because to your point, everybody's going to have technology. And, and yes, technology is important. But technology without standards or without strategy, rather, right? What, right. what are we trying to accomplish, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And you know, it's interesting, oh, and it's interesting enough that where a lot of the work that I've been doing lately has really been cent centered around, Rick. You know, here's where we are right now. Not really sure where we're going. There's so many frameworks out here right now. Um, I'm getting hit with. Idle 4, I'm getting hit with DVMS, I'm getting hit with all these various frameworks, USM, all of this, what do I use, right? Um, um, and I, I really feel like um, quite often the industry there's, and Roy Atkinson and I talk about this all the time, there's a major gap between what most IT departments actually do day to day versus where the industry says they should be. There's a huge gap there. Um, and what you talk about at the conference and what the actual maturity of these ID departments actually are. And that's why, I guess, Doug, that's why we're consultants, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I told you my definition of a consultant before we started. You know, it's a consultant, someone that asks to borrow your watch and then tells you what time it is. But uh, but that's just my well, little personal yeah. byline there with that. One. But <laughs> Nora, get us back on track. How how can enterprise service management drive digital success? So I agree with what everybody's been saying so far. And I love the idea of it being about strategy and it is about delivering service. I'm going to take it up a couple of notches, though. I think it's really about the customer experience, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And I don't know any CEO or CIO that isn't thinking about that as a differentiating factor for them to disrupt and to get a competitive advantage. And if they are not thinking about it, they're going to be left behind. There is no question about it. We are in the experience phase of everything now. This is the experience revolution we're in. And so when we think about that, we have to look at, about the, at the total experience. And the total experience is the employees and the customers together. So you have to have highly engaged employees. And to do that, you really need to simplify the way they interact with all services internally so they can focus on their core delivery. So if we start with employees and employee services and enterprise service management delivers the platform for that, then you have a way of having consistency, you have speed, you have reliability of services, you have measurements, you have all the goodness, all the ingredients that can curate the best possible services so people are highly engaged and they can deliver on their promise. They could deliver to their potential. And so that's the way I look at it. It's about to the three S's is, is it simple enough? Is it solid? And is it scalable? And if you've got those three S's, it's simple, solid, scalable, you're without a doubt on track to getting the smile from the end. And when you have people smiling and they come in engaged every day, the sky's the limit. Now you tap into all kinds of good things that come out of that joy um, of delivering service and being present. So I love the idea of having portfolios of services, having different methodologies that you can bring to the table, optimizing your processes and your technology suite. But it's still first and foremost about the people. people. And that's what I think ESM is really about. It's about servicing the people on both sides of the equation. Yeah, and that's that's and I, I like that, Nora. And that's similar to, you know, a, a, some of the thought that John shared with us, right? It, you know, if we think about the experience and we put the human in as uh, as kind of the focus of that experience, um, and and you know the employee, 
Uh, I just wrote a blog about this just recently. It's just, uh, you know, if, if we take care of that employee experience and provide the enabling background for that great employee experience, it's going to translate into a great customer experience. And, exactly. and there, there's science all around that. And, you know, I see that Roy commented repeating the simple, solid, scalable formula. But I also think about remembering that every interaction with our customers, internal or external, is a moment of truth. And you could either be your, a zero or you could be a hero. Yep. So EFM is part of the recipe, I think, to delivering the hero experience. And who doesn't want to be a hero? Well, I, I left my cape in my other suitcase, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But uh, okay. Mine is tucked in behind my uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. So, so you know, we, we've opened up a lot of good topics here and a lot of good thought processes around how ESM can drive that digital success. So should digital transformation be a driver for enterprise service management or is it the other way around? Rick, what do you think? Um, it's an interesting question because um, a, a lot of, and what I was getting at before was the fact that day-to-day uh, -day I'm starting to see, and I've been asked to, hey, Rick, could you develop a roadmap so that we can begin to understand where we're going um, from not only uh, what we do to Norris Point, about um, UX and having that great customer experience, um, but also what do we do to continually drive those great customer experiences? Um, digital transformation is important because what we're working to do in, you know, in a lot of our initiatives is to balance the need for a human intervention um, and drive automation. Now, is AI the big answer in a lot of instances? Not yet. Um, you know, um, I'll probably get beat up for saying that, but, you know, again, a lot of IT departments don't have the maturity yet to go there. Um, but there is opportunity for some automation to be a part of that, to digitize a lot of the process, to balance um, what has been in the past a need for human intervention within the processes. Um, and then let's work to really understand um, you know, what is it we're driving toward uh, in our digital transformation efforts? Is it, again, are we trying to reduce the workforce? Are we trying to uh, reduce cost and service delivery? Are we trying to increase uh, customer satisfaction? At the end of the day, what is that initiative set out to do? Yeah, so, you know, so what I'm hearing you say, Rick, is, you know, the strategy is very important here. Yeah. And these are two key ingredients, your, your digital transformation approach, as well as how are you going to enable that or support that perhaps through well, enterprise service management going yeah. forward. And uh, another great point, it's not a one and done, no, right? No. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I share your concern. I, I with respect to AI, I, great opportunities for us, great technologies, We're just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. It's not the magic wand. I, I think a lot of organizations lack maturity in their process, their data governance, uh, you know, business practices, business procedures, mm -hmm. um, you know, lots and lots of opportunity there before really AI, you know, before it's time to implement the AI part of this. So, um, Nora, what do you think? Does enterprise service management drive digital transformation or the other way around? I think it's a tango. Ah. It's a dance. Mm -hmm. They are intertwined, and if you've ever danced the tango, or if you've watched it, you see how you you almost can't tell them apart. Who's holding who and who's leading who? They're so enmeshed in each other, and I look at it very, very basically as this: think about how you're onboarding an employee, and you're trying to create a great first impression. You want to hire them and bring them aboard and enable them to do great work and be as excited about their day-to-day -day as they were when they were interviewing. And if you're going to deliver that first wow experience, you need as much of their onboarding activities to be as digital and as seamless as possible. You don't want to have them poking around a website trying to figure out what 
form they need to download or waiting for an email and things getting lost. And then they have to, let's say it's, it's, it's delivered to them manually. They have to figure out how to sign it with a pen. Then they have to scan it with a scanner. Then they have to fax it or they have, when you don't have things digitized sufficiently, you create a laborious mundane process. And whether you're on the receiving end as a consumer or an employee or on the delivery side, I don't think anybody wants to be doing repetitive, boring, taxing processes or activities. And so digital transformation is delivering the better, faster experience and figuring out ways to continuously optimize people's time, which is their most valuable resource. Now, what? So I really do see it as they're, they're very, very heavily intertwined and they rely on each other. And I don't see ESM necessarily being successful if it's all in archaic, undigitized mechanisms. It just will struggle to manifest and flourish and continue to improve. Yeah, you, I mean, you hit it right on the head, in my opinion. You know, without digital, digital digitization, mm -hmm. say that one three times fast. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it, it, enterprise service management is not going to have much of a dent. But on the flip side, and I and I wrote it down, the, the tango between enterprise service management and, and digital transformation, I, I feel a blog coming on. I'm just gonna warn you. Here comes a blog now because I gotta think about go. that. And 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 I just want to comment here. You don't want to see me tango. Uh, it, it will be kind of a train wreck. The experience there. Too. Okay. Well, okay. Good point. It does take two. So. Everyone, your partner will lead you really well. Yeah, but but I, I think that's a great analogy, is that these they kind of interact. One may get a little ahead and then the other comes and but they're working in concert with you know, the two partners it. are it's working. Yeah. Dance, right? Yes. You watch a tango and think it's just, oh, you know, a waltz or no, it's an intense, very, very passionate exchange of movement. Yeah. Wow. That's an interesting way of thinking about things, Dory. You've, you've given me some food for thought here as I write this blog that's coming in there you go. already percolating in my head. John. What do you think? Does one drive the other? Well, personally, I think uh, whether you want to or not, you're going to digitally transform. Uh, technology is so pervasive. Uh, it's everywhere. It's not going to go away. Uh, and uh, the only question is whether you're in control of your transformation or not. Uh, and so um, you can, uh, you know, uh, Tango or whether which comes first, it, it really doesn't matter. You're going to transform. The world is transforming all around you. So the question is, what do we do about that? Are we in control of that transformation or not? Are we directing it appropriately to give our customers the right experience? Do we Are we aligned with our strategy or not? Uh, and... Um, I think what enterprise service management does, or at least gives us an opportunity to do, is since everyone in the enterprise is a service provider, enterprise service management gives us the opportunity to get in control of our digital transformation. That, to me, is what what's really key. And I'm not sure that organizations that are focused on the digital and not focused on the enterprise service management are necessarily in control of their transformation. That's my belief. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, you know, you, you've got to be in control of this. Otherwise, it's just chaos, right? It's just chaotic. Right. It's, it, you know, you're not going to hit the outcomes that you're hoping for. Um, you know, I'm reminded in, in, in the show notes here, uh, John just popped up, says, kind of like the hopping stool with each leg being independent. Roy Atkinson hosted one of these a few uh, a couple of months ago, to talk about people, process, and technology. And many organizations are really good about growing the technology leg of that stool. And they ignore the other two legs, people and process. And what we're saying here is these, these all have to come together. Technology can do anything we want it to do. But we have to have the people focus. We have to have the right process behind it as well. So I, 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 that analogy is stuck in my head as well. So uh, for those of you listening in, eager to answer your questions, if you have any. Otherwise, we're just impressed that you think our expert opinion is hitting the mark. So that's, that's a good thing. So uh, with that, 
here comes the question that probably most folks would like to hear. So if I'm a business leader and, and I'm considering enterprise service management, where or how should I start? <laughs> Nora, let's start with you. So the question is why? Why do you need to do this? Do you care about your employee experience? Do you care about making them efficient and effective? And if the answer is no, well, then you don't need to do ESM. But if the answer is absolutely, then there's your North Star. That's the reason you're doing this. It's so vital that we understand that Still, it's the people that matter the most in that equation, in that stool. And so valuing their energy, their thought, their creativity, their time is going to go a long way to helping maintain and, and grow their engagement levels. And I think that is the most prized possession of any organization. It's the talent and highly engaged talent. I mean, you're golden if you have that. So I think ESM is around constantly figuring out ways to do better and on a continuous service improvement. But why do we have to go so far? Think about the largest company that has proven that ESM works, Amazon. Isn't Amazon an example of ESM from an external perspective? How many services do they provide to a single portal? And you can access pretty much every part of it through natural language searches in a common search window. And it gets delivered very similarly, regardless whether you're looking for storage or photos or fo um, movies or whatever it is. Now, the one, the city one or the um, medical piece, it doesn't matter. They found a way to integrate your services through one platform to make it really simple and it is consistent and it is something that they can provide at scale. So I think they are a role model for how ESM can even be presented to the external world, not just internally. Wow. That's, that's an interesting way of thinking about it. Cause you're right. Uh, it's, it's, it's so simple, but all of the processes, all the seamless um, d design that has gone in behind that and it's all done digitally. Uh, really, you know, that's that's really to your point. That that's really kind of the gold standard. What we should aspire to get to. And, and um, you don't think of Amazon and ESM solution, but they are. It's just it doesn't come to mind because they're so good at so many things, and not really thinking of that being a homogenous approach to service delivery. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah, it, I hadn't considered that. So, yeah, that that's a great takeaway for me personally out of our discussion today. Uh, John, where should people start with ESM? If I'm a business leader, what do I? Where do I start? Why? How do I start? Well, that highly dependent on each organization. So there's no there's no one right answer. You need to look at the size of the organization. Um, uh, what their objectives are. So there's a, there's a lot of factors. So uh, I, I will say a couple of things. I'll kind of turn their question around a little bit. A couple of things that I would not do is I would not start with a tool. Um, you know, uh, establishing enterprise service management is does not mean installing an ESM tool. Uh, so that's not the place to start. Um, if you can, uh, uh, do a top-down implementation and get sponsorship. Uh, that's always the preferred uh, approach. Uh, that is not always easy to do. Um, C-level executives, particularly on the business side, I don't think have a good understanding of service management in general, uh, let alone enterprise service management. So, right. so that can be a really uh, difficult place to start. Uh, so, uh, in uh, at least in the the activity that I'm doing, a lot of uh, the deployments start bottom up, uh, and they start in a particular problem area of the business, and and uh, have some success and go from there. And eventually, they get sponsorship and high level buy in once they see it's actually working. So that's that's what I'm seeing anyway. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a good point 
you know, and it kind of dovetails into what Nora was saying, you know, in, in my experience and, and certainly happy to hear uh, other opinions around this, but it, you know, top down support is, is so important when you're doing things like this. And one of the key factors here is answering the why, why is it important for them to do that? So I see a, a lot of uh, synergy between getting that top down support and, and helping uh, our senior leaders answer that why. Uh, about uh, why this is so important. So, uh, Rick, where should we start? How should we start with enterprise service management? You know, to John's point, you know, uh, quite often the senior leaders right now will come to us and say, you know, um, this is a particular pain point we have. And so, of course, being the consultants we are, we take a hard look at that, but really try to drive more of a holistic view as to the whole of the organization. Again, going back to the roadmaps. Um, with that said, however, one of the things that I'm seeing as a pain point uh, where ESM is being addressed as a step one is really in the onboarding offboarding processes right now. Uh, many organizations um, have come to realize how competitively important their onboarding, offboard, uh, their onboarding processes are right now. Um, there's a particular client we, we have been working with where um, their manual processes that they currently have in place um, did not have any sort of uh, ESM methodologies attached to it to where um, hardware assets could be assigned, as you guys know, um, making sure that all of those things are assigned in a timely manner, um, being able to account for those things. Uh, making sure the right model, serial numbers, all of those things are aptly assigned. But that's all well and good. But what really happens is, is how, does, how do I, as a new employee, then uh, as a result of experiencing, to Nora's point, experiencing that thing through the service request portal or whatever it is I do as a new employee, how do I feel about this company? Because one, wow, they really deliver on time, on budget, quickly, blah, blah, blah. Or, God, these guys are terrible. Do I really want to be here? Do I really want to be here? This is crazy. I, I'm trying to work on Monday. Uh, I've been here for two weeks now, and I still can't get. So this is a small portion of Norris Point of what ESM can mean to an organization in HR, finance, all of the various departments that we're impacting. So that's kind of my, my 30,000 foot overview, but um, yeah, it most certainly lends itself to credibility and efficiencies at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and Roy Adkinson pointed out something in the chat, some research that HDI yeah, did please. recently. You know, two thirds of the responding organizations said that their productivity had increased. Because yeah. we understand the flow of work. We understand mm -hmm. the digital technologies that are involved in that. Uh, we, we've put them together in such a way where it becomes more seamless. Like, uh, and, and that onboarding, offboarding experience can, can really um, influence an employee's perception. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's funny to me. We're sitting here in 2024, and we still don't know. <laughs> this is one of the biggest challenges, right? How do I onboard an employee? And then follow right. How do I successfully offboard? You know, mm -hmm. get rid of the security accesses and all the other things that come with offboarding. And it just, uh, but but you know, as Roy points out in the research that HDI had done recently, if you do this and do it well, your productivity does go up. That's what the uh, uh, research uh, research uh, you know events indicate. So, well, we we've been talking quite a while, and and I really appreciate all of the great perspectives. I'm sure our audience uh, in, enjoys that as well. Um, any keys to success for enterprise service management? Rick, let's uh, let's stay with you. Yeah, sure. Um, again, in my mind, uh, I'm I'm going to kind of dance twofold here. Um, Are you tangoing? <laughs> Let's go back to Nora's tango, if you will. Um, you know, there's definitely a uh, strong relationship. You know, it's not ESM versus ITSM. They are actually, you know, they are doing a tango. One impacts the other. ITSM, hey, how are we going to improve what we deliver? 
uh, ESM, how can we leverage that across the organization, bringing about great customer uh, or employee services and that sort of thing, which is what we lack. And then those employee services and gained efficiencies will ultimately lead to how we actually deliver to our customers. Um, you know, again, uh, many um, of our leaders or uh, IT leaders are looking at onboarding, offboarding on the backside. Offboarding is really reclamation of costs and those types of things. Um, but, you know, I would, I would really, you know, uh, and I'd like what John said, let's not um, buy a tool. Um, you know, there's an old adage that a friend of mine always says it's rules before tools. Um, let's take a look at that first, and then that can help us determine where we need to go forward. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Too many organizations get stuck, in my experience, uh, only looking at it from a tool or technology perspective, and then limiting their further limiting their thinking into the capability of the tool versus right. what is it that we're trying to accomplish from mm -hmm. a business perspective. So I think that's great advice. Uh, Nora. Any keys to our success? Yeah, as I was listening to Rick and John, I was thinking about the role of culture in this yeah. whole world of digital transformation and ESM. And I think it's a big, big piece of this. And somebody a long time ago explained the definition of culture as the behavior that senior leadership either display or tolerate. And I use that litmus test every time when I'm trying to think, is it the cultural aspect that's driving this or not? And it's been tried and true so many times. So when I think about rolling out ESM, it's really about, do you have a collaborative culture? Do you have good partnerships between departments? Do you have an encouraging, supportive stance towards people in the lower ranks, the middle, all tiers? of the organization and do you create opportunities for people to engage and share ideas and say, what if, or are those couched and shut down and are they shunned if they try mm. to do that? Mm. So much of this is not just up down and it's not just bottom and it's up and down. So if you have a culture that is open and constructive towards collaboration, you have a higher degree of uh, progress that's gonna be made because you're championing the best idea, regardless of where it came from and who's behind it. And I also do think tools are enablers in the end. Yes. It's so important to keep it simple and not trying to boil the ocean. You know, you can buy every tool in the world and you're just going to end up with a mess. It's going to be looking for a needle in a haystack. Exactly. Simple is got still. <laughs> you have to just not overthink it. And, you, and I also think it's a progressive approach. It's building on little successes, medium successes. You're gonna get there over time. I don't think it's a revolution. It's an evolution that you need. I, yeah, I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. It's all so, about evolving. Right, so it's, it's about creating momentum mm -hmm. and building more and more momentum with time and having a culture of celebrating success and idea sharing. And, and if you have that, you have a much, much better chance of building and sustaining an ESM and having digital transformation be a huge part of the recipe to your success in, as an organization and as a service provider and a product delivery. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Culture is one of those things often overlooked and uh, it can make or break your, not only your enterprise service management approach, but but any major business initiative. It uh, if the culture for breakfast, as in, as, isn't that what they say? That's the old <laughs> saying, isn't it? Culture will eat strategy yeah, exactly. for breakfast every time, every time. John, what are some keys to success? What do you think? Well, I think you need to recognize that IT is going to play in a, a leadership role, but that doesn't mean that uh, enterprise service management is IT driven. Um, the business needs to uh, drive enterprise service management. Amen. Uh, <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, I'm evangelizing the USM method. So that's, that's really what I'm about. And I think uh, this goes to the fundamentals that uh, Rick had mentioned. Uh, uh, you need to revisit your, your management system 
from an enterprise service management perspective. Uh, I don't think people are doing that. Um, and just recognize that service management is everybody's business. Uh, everyone is going to be operating and contributing to the ongoing improvement of services. It's all about service supply chains. Uh, this goes to the integration that uh, Nora mentioned earlier. So uh, all of that is 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 critical. If you do those, focus on those three things, you'll have a fighting chance in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's great advice and great insight. So, well, uh, we're coming to the conclusion of our conversation. I, I personally have enjoyed the conversation. I, I hope our audience has enjoyed it as well. Any closing thoughts, uh, Nora? Yeah, I want to leave you with this. There are two titles we all have and we just don't know it. Sales and service. We're all in the sales industry and we're all in the service industry. It's always about selling your ideas, selling your services, selling your, your, your strategy. And then it's about servicing once you've sold it. And so when you think about the digital concept of that, it's the how you do that. ESM is the how you do that. You've sold them that you want to deliver outstanding customer experience. You want to get to market sooner. You want to have the best products. You want to have the best overall impression of your services. And so digital transformation and ESM, that tango together, is the how you do it. I think the tango is important here. I'm going to have to go to Fred Murray, you know, Arthur Murray Dance School or something here because... <laughs> I, I, I must have left my dance shoes in that with my with my cape. Uh, I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> John, what do you think? Closing thoughts. Well, in a similar similar vein, we're all customers and we're all providers, right? So we're customers on one end, we're providers on the other, and those are the links. Uh, those are the that's the how the supply chain works. And so, you need to recognize that we've got to play nicely, and and we depend on each other. And if we don't work together. Uh, uh, the, the end customer at the end of the chain is not going to be happy. So yeah. uh, easy to say, hard to do. Yeah. One of the things I often remind my clients, if it only took one of us to do the results of the company, then what are the rest of us doing here? We have to work together. We have to collaborate. So uh, last but not least, last but not least, I know. It's <laughs> <laughs> Rick, what do you think? Closing thoughts. Um, you know, um, Doug, you and I have had these conversations, as many of us in the HDI forum have had. Um, you don't have to live with status quo. Um, if you're in the, if you're in an environment, and back to Nora's point about culture, um, just because the muffler has a hole in it doesn't mean you want to drive through a quiet neighborhood. Um, one of the things that you know. <laughs> I'm just, you know, um, and I know that was stupid, but, you know, it's the only thing that's in mind. But, um, Not going to be a blog for me, Rick. I'm just saying. Oh, you know, hey, you know, I try. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, basically, um, many IT environments out here are just living with what's broken. And, you know, it's time for that to change. Um, yeah. Because, again, you are impacting not only the culture, uh, within the organization that's being built, and it's a very negative culture. But I would also like to see these organizations really begin to think about, you know, the structural ITSM component from a foundational level, driving ultimately in their roadmap toward enterprise service management, however long that takes. There's no big rule here as long as you're doing what's necessary to drive great customer experiences. I think that's a great note to end on. Nora, John, Rick, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure for me personally. I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed it as well. So, uh, And thank you to our audience for joining us on this edition of Digital Light Dialogue. See you next time. Thank you for joining our Digital Dialogue. Be sure to join our next Digital Dialogue on the first and third Tuesdays of every month.